A radio play comic is meant to adapt the stories, mostly, of great unadapted old and forgotten comics from the past. I use voice acting and narration to abridge the work as much as possible without lessening its impact and to bring these stories to life the best way I can. Please enjoy. Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to the Fusion Space for today's episode of Radio Play Comics, Matrix Supergirl 2, focused on her 1996 ongoing series. In my first episode on Matrix Supergirl, I went over her origin of being created in a laboratory by Lex Luthor in a pocket universe, and traveling to find Superman, and how she settled on her current form. But her body is made of alien proto-matter, and she has only the memories and life experience she's gained since coming out of that lab only a few years before this series. She's had a relationship with Lex Luthor II, which ended in betrayal and sadness, but has also become part of Clark Kent's family when she lived with Ma and Pa Kent, and they love her as an adopted daughter. Other than that, she's still a rather blank slate, but all that will change when she saves the life of Linda Danvers, a teenage victim of demonic sacrifice, by merging their bodies together and replacing Linda's vacant soul with her own consciousness, in the process becoming much more human, as well as becoming Linda via her transformation powers and now having parents, friends, and a school life to juggle along with her regular duties fighting monsters as Supergirl. This series was DC's attempt to bring in younger readers, and female readers in particular, by following popular cultural trends of the time. So in this book you'll see a lot of 90s teen hallmarks such as skateboarding, the flannel and jeans style of grunge, references to popular music and movies of the time, and a pretty strong influence from Buffy the Vampire Slayer though the book remains very focused on Supergirl hiding her super self from her human life, and she doesn't really develop a Scooby gang who help her with the enemies she fights, which would, from here, take on a more supernatural direction, rather than the aliens and cloned monsters Superman was usually fighting at the same time. Despite its influences, Peter David shaped this book into something very unique and very much of its own style, and began a bold new chapter in the life of Matrix Supergirl, where she would finally have the humanity she had long wished for, and that would have its benefits and its downsides, as she will grapple with human weakness of spirit for the first time, and we discover that Linda wasn't quite as innocent a victim as Supergirl and we might have first thought. Supergirl's main recurring enemy would be Buzz, a blonde demon in human form who seems to want to antagonize Supergirl as much as he wants to date her, and who was, in fact, the man who lured in, corrupted, and sacrificed Linda in the first place. If his character seems odd or out of place, look up Spike in the Buffy show and he might make a bit more sense. The dates don't seem to line up though, with the show premiering in 1997, so it's entirely possible it's the other way around and Joss Whedon was reading Supergirl when he developed the character of Spike. I don't know for a fact that Spike was the influence for Buzz or vice versa, but it certainly would be quite a coincidence if they weren't, as they occupy very similar roles in their heroines' lives as sexy bad boys and they share a similar look. Although, to be fair, that was a very common trope at the time. In any case, he will hatch schemes and plots to harm Supergirl, or try to corrupt her, or just to see what she'll do when provoked. But to the public, he's just a weird guy, so she can't just attack him in broad daylight. There's also an almost Lynchian sense of things going on beneath the surface of Leesburg, the placid small midwestern town where Linda lives and Supergirl is set. As behind the white picket fences and friendly general store clerks, there are occult systems of power and a war being waged between good and evil on a higher plane of existence, using the town as their battleground, to the extent there's even an avatar of God, or the Presence himself, in the form of a small boy with a baseball bat. This is only hinted at this early in the run, but I thought you should know who he is for when he shows up, as it helps to explain Supergirl's eventual transformation into an Earth-born angel later on. Her transformations and the final fate of Matrix and Linda Danvers are things I'll discuss after the main story, which will cover the first nine issues of the comic, and it will stand as an example for potential readers of the run. It's a very long and strange story as it goes on, and it's all good, but I don't plan to return and adapt more of it later on, meaning this should be my final episode devoted to Matrix Supergirl. I'll go over her further transformations and the highlights of the rest of the run in the outro. But for now, let's gear up for supernatural superhero adventure and a bit of horror under the surface of small town life. And let's begin. This short story ran in Showcase 96, a DC anthology series. It serves to set up Supergirl's character and state of mind before her series begins, and to show what her life is like before the series' inciting events occur. Limited Resources Supergirl watches a baby in an incubator machine. I wonder what it's like to be born. And to die. 
and the thread that holds it all together. It's so obviously fragile at the beginning, and it doesn't grow any stronger as life goes on. It just gets hidden by years of kidding yourself into thinking you're exempt from a human death. Like I am. Don't look so sad, Supergirl. Premature and a breach. If it weren't for you, we'd probably have lost both mother and daughter. I know. I just... never mind. Unfortunately, you're not really allowed in here. I'll have to ask you to leave. Besides, you look like you could use some rest. All right. I try to play by the rules, but they're rules written by unseen hands. Well, I can be unseen, too. She turns invisible. And I'm not quite ready to rest. Now keep an eye on things like it back, Wilbur. Whistle if you need me. No problem, chick. I doubt my presence in the morgue would be any more welcome than it was in the maternity ward. So I'll just be one more invisible ghost in a likely haven for them. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Supergirl takes the dead man's hand. I wish I could have done more for you. Huh? Chick, 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 chick. Chick. The attendant sees the floating hand and faints. Oh, dear. Matrix sits in the hallway, deep in thought. Look, I hate to be pushy. Odd for a reporter. All right, touche. But look, I'm on a deadline, and I'd love to talk to you about how you helped during the hurricane. Come on, it'll be great PR for you. Pardon? PR? Public relations. You know, publicity. You think I do this for publicity? I don't know why any of you super types do it. But it's obvious. I mean, if you saw a truck bearing down on a child, would you stand there and let it happen? Hmm. Daring reporter saves child. Hell of a story. Yeah, I'd go for it. You'd do it because it's a hell of a story. Amazing. Well, it would be. My typical day consists of finding great news stories. What's a typical day like in your life? Mine? What do I say to her? How do I respond to that? Was today typical? Today as a hurricane gave its last gasp on this coastal town before heading out to sea? Supergirl remembers the rescue which brought her here. A pregnant woman on her way to the hospital drove off a cliff during the hurricane. <laughs> and Supergirl flew down and saved her. She asked to be taken to the hospital, and while Supergirl flew her car there, she saw another car rushing through the storm and a telephone pole about to fall on it. She used her telekinetic blast to move it away, but she couldn't stop the rock slide which followed it, and the car crashed. The mother-to-be was screaming, and she couldn't spare a moment for the other driver, and made it to the hospital as, as fast as possible. She headed back to check on the other driver at top speed. Hold on in there! Help is on the... I stared at the priest's corpse for I don't know how long. It seemed forever. Probably just seconds. A typical day? God in heaven. If such as he listens to such as I, give me an answer. I don't have a typical day in my life, Supergirl said. Frankly, I don't have anything outside of trying to help people. My life is nothing like yours. Life is a concept I'm still trying to wrestle with. Sometimes I wonder if I even am alive, if any of us are, and what it all means. Get that typed up and on cue cards for the evening broadcast, Maxie. I'll be back in an hour. Yeah, yeah, I know. Superhero is amateur philosopher. Still, you know, I met a couple of her type, and there's something different about her. I wouldn't say she's searching for answers as much as she's trying to figure out what the questions are. Jeez, listen to me. I'm going to sound like her next. She was holding something back. I'm sure of it. Might as well check on that woman she saved, the new mother, see if she's got any thoughts on... Supergirl? The reporter finds Supergirl fast asleep in the mother's room and puts the covers over her. Huh. Look at her. 
sleeping like a baby. This collected edition has chosen to print the covers without any title, number, or other insignia covering the art. It's not a common practice, and it indicates their pride in the artwork. Blood swirls into the drain of a shower, forming an S-shape. I don't know which wound to clean first. Gashes all over. Legs, arms, forehead. And the soap stings like hot needles. A young brunette woman is cleaning her many wounds. And I'm not sure how I got this way. Who cut me up? Who did this to me? Who... Who am I? God... If you're there, help me. How, how odd. The pain and the praying, both of them seem odd somehow. Maybe I'm an atheist or something, but who doesn't feel pain? Her friend enters her apartment, carrying a box. Who the heck is that? No, wait, I know her. Her name's... Maddie? The... Linda? Linda. Linda Danvers. That's it. Linda, you're alive! Everyone was saying you were dead. Everybody. Maddie hugs Linda. I can't believe it. Look at you. Everything you went through, and there's not a mark on you. Not a... What? She looks in the mirror. How? How is that possible? You've got to tell me everything that happened. Yuck! What's that? They always say eyes are the mirror of the soul. My eyes. I'm positive. They were brown. Maddie picks up the discarded proto-matter. Linda, what's this pink crapola clogging your drain? Linda, what am I, speaking in tongues here? I need answers. I was empty. Oh, well, that pretty much covers it. Honey, you were kidnapped. The papers talked about all kinds of things. Satanism and, and I don't know what. And the warehouse burned and they found the charred remains of your ID and... Linda, say something. Linda finds a hole in her jeans. I remember these jeans. Buzz, he burned a hole in them. He heard me, you creep. You did that on purpose. <laughs> Everything's on purpose, love. There's no accidents. Yeah, how do you explain your parents making you? Fight, love. Fight. Linda storms off down the street. Creep, creep, Ola. Creeping crud. I was angry. So angry. At him and myself equally, I think. And then the hands grabbed me. And I felt hot breath on my neck. She is yanked into a dark alley. And heard a laugh that sounded like a sucking chest wound. A man with a strange symbol on his forehead speaks to her. They said something. Can't remember. Don't want to remember. Just know that all I thought about was getting away. Linda shrugs out of her jacket and escapes the alley. A brief flash of pain, and then my legs were pumping. But at the far end of the street, I saw him. I saw a buzz. He didn't say or do anything. He just stood there and smiled, like I was his at any time. I ran, but I knew it wasn't over, that it was just starting. Linda, when I say say something, that's your cue to talk, not zone out for 30 sec. Uh, Linda, since when are your eyes blue? I was empty, and, and I needed to learn. What? Maddie? Yeah? I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, thank God. I thought it was just me. And all those arguments we had, all the bad feeling, consider it forgotten, okay, Linda? That's easy enough. We gotta call your folks. Your mom's been nuts with worry, and your dad's practically vegged out. Out? Linda looks at the phone. And I remember... Out of control, young lady. You are completely out of control. Well, pardon me if I don't feel like turning control of my life over to an idiot like you. Linda's father glares at her, his fist raised in anger. I didn't flinch. 
I didn't even flinch as I waited for him to hammer me. After all, it's what you want, isn't it? Isn't it? No, it isn't. You know it. You both hate me. You wish I'd never been born. She goes to her room and slams the door. <clears throat> Linda. <clears throat> Linda? She has repeated the action in the present. Felt like I was suffocating. Had to get out. These memories flooding through me. It's like I'm seeing them through a fractured prism, distorted and oddly colored. I'm moving faster. But how can I possibly go fast enough to outrace my... myself? Linda flies down the street in a blur. <sighs> oh. My. God. The police try to talk down a jumper from a ledge with a bullhorn. Jump! Jump! Shut up, you! Mr. Loeb, think about what you're doing! No matter how bad things are, nothing is ever hopeless. Let's talk this over for... No more words. He steps out into empty air. I have no idea how much distance I've covered. Been running all over town, and my feet aren't even touching the ground. And then I spot an emergency. And as if I've done this a hundred times, I save him. Linda leaps into the air and catches him. I save him. I've saved a life. And the emptiness ever so slightly ebbs. She sets him down and speeds away. <laughs> who? Who was that? The Flash? No. It, it was an angel. Linda screeches to a halt. <laughs> I'm not out of breath. I'm not tired. I'm... I'm not human. What am I? Yes. Yes, I realize now. That's the question. It's what was preying on my mind. Minds. Mind. She examines her hands in wonder, her shoes still smoking from the friction. I am human. That was the point. My name is Linda Danvers. I have parents who love or hate me, I think. A friend named Maddie Harcourt, I think. I have a life so close I can taste it. The police try to clear the area by a destroyed building. Everybody just move along. There's nothing more to see here. Buzz speaks with a demonic entity in a dark alley. They'll be at this lot for days. We still want her. We must have her. She disrupted our entrance to this sphere. Do not fail us again. Save the threat for someone who'll be impressed, Lord Shakat. You'll have her in your claws, I promise you. I don't want your promises. I want blood. Some guy talking to himself. Cripes, this stuff always brings the nuts out from under their rocks. Linda goes to the town library seeking answers and runs into a young man there who aspires to be a reporter and who gathered information on her when she went missing. So you got amnesia? That's the deal? I don't think I do. I remember my name, pieces of my life, but it's like I'm seeing it from a distance. Like I'm really somebody else. She sees Clark in her mind. Don't say a word, May. Keep it to yourself. Understand? Don't say a word. Are you okay? You look like you saw a ghost. I'm... I'm fine. You're saying? No, nothing. Can you help me fill in the blanks? Well, your name's Linda Danvers, so if that name tag's in your underwear, it's yours. You earn money from sculptures you sell at local craft fairs. Dropped out of college halfway. I couldn't find out why. And according to your mom, the only thing that had any real meaning in your life was Supergirl. Supergirl? Supergirl remembers visiting Linda's parents after her disappearance. Supergirl? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I was just admiring this statue Linda made. It's lovely. Linda thought, thinks, you're wonderful. She said she could relate to you, the way you used your power to do the best job you could. Heck, even your 
No offense, your poor taste in men. No offense taken, Miss Danvers. I hear that a lot. So understand when I did the TV appeal, asking for your help. Well, I'm a spiritual woman, Supergirl. Things happen for a reason, and God meant for you to... You're making a fool of yourself, Sylvia. Fred, you promised. For crying out loud, Sylvia, you're talking spirituality to someone who's not even human, right? What are you, an alien, a clone, some shape-changing soulless blob of protoplasm? Mr. Danvers, you know nothing about me. I'm here to help, so please stop trying to hurt me. I'm... I'm sorry. Linda's father breaks down and clings to Supergirl. Please, please don't let them kill her. I won't. I swear. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Cutter. My head was in the clouds. What were you saying? I was saying that, according to your parents, Supergirl pitched in looking for you. See, there was this bizarre cult operating here in Leesburg. Police hadn't been able to nail them. But it was believed they were already responsible for several deaths, including some grisly beheadings. You were believed to be their latest victim when your beat-up van was found in the woods, the cult symbols scribbled all over it. A couple of days later, there's a big fire in a warehouse. They find French-fried cultists, Supergirl's costume, and know you. Police have her outfit. There's a press conference in half an hour. Hey, what's wrong? Get away! Is it the flame from the lighter? That spook you? I said get away! Linda shoves him and his chair rolls into a desk. Wah! <laughs> Ah! Cutter, what the heck are you doing? I finally met her, Bonnie. A girl who will scare my mom. I'm getting the wedding invites printed up this afternoon. He runs out onto the street, calling my name. He looks around. Linda hides on a high ledge. Doesn't look up. But I, I look inward. I see her. I see Supergirl in pitched battle. More than see. I can feel the heat, intense and rippling. Supergirl throws around the cultist while a demon watches through a flaming portal. Somewhere there's the stench of burning human flesh threatening to turn my stomach. And there's something else, something feral, just beyond my consciousness. A spell. They're trying to release something. <sighs> there's flame everywhere. There's flame. And I'm screaming. Screaming at myself. Linda, on fire, screams next to Buzz. I deflect another blast, staggering beneath it. <laughs> my psychokinetic shield's barely protecting me. And I see myself across the way. And, God, I can feel the dagger slice through my gut. Buzz slashes Linda open with a knife. <laughs> I'm dying, alive and dying. Buzz throws the knife toward a pair of monstrous hands in the fire. Whoosh. A PK blast shatters the blood-tinted knife, thwarting the spell. Whoosh. The creature roars, a screech like a million discordant violins. <laughs> the portal begins to close. Whoosh. The air tears at me, and I am a simulation of life, feeling no pain. And I am all too mortal, my lungs burning, my mind numbing from agony. Supergirl kneels over Linda's flaming form. Screwed up everything. Not, not fair. Not ready to die. All the people I've known, loved. Supergirl sees the faces of Ma and Pa Kent and Clark and Lex. They hurtle through my mind, and they all say, Accept it. You did your best. You can do no more. But they don't know me. None of them do. Don't know my emptiness. I've had human sensibilities layered onto me, like a brightly painted statue. But that's all I am. For I have looked into my eyes, and I've finally realized I've never seen anything looking back. Supergirl takes Linda's hand as she transforms into her protomatter state and merges her body with Linda's. Ah! Yeah.
Back in the present, Linda lies curled into a ball. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I regret we've no update on Supergirl's wear up out. Supergirl's uniform disappears from the policeman's hands in a blur. And Supergirl rejoins the sky. We are as one. My morphing body somehow joined with that of Linda Danvers. I've given her life, and she has given me... She has given me hope. And may God have mercy on my soul. Supergirl, Body and Soul Cat's Paw Linda and Buzz remove each other's clothes in the woods in a photograph. I remember the moment as from a distance. I think of it now, and it appalls me. But at the same time, my skin tingles with ghostly sensations of passion. Separating my memories, my personality, from Linda Danvers, it's like trying to separate yolk from egg white in an omelet. My protomatter bonded with her dying body. It didn't keep her alive, but it gave me her life. But there's still fragments missing, and I was hoping that by searching her our possessions, I'd get a feeling for... Wait a minute. The guy in the picture, whose cigarette breath I can taste in my mouth, whose fingers caress the curve of my spine. It's the same guy who knifed her. Who knifed... Linda! Linda, are you there? Maddie, use your key. Get us in there. And if this is some sort of joke... Maddie opens the door. A joke? Get real! Linda, it's Dad! Mom and Dad! A door slams shut. <laughs> What's that noise? From the closet? Fred, call the police! It, it could be one of those cultists! If it is, I want to wring his neck personally! Fred opens it, and Linda stands in the closet wearing a robe over her costume. D dad Mom? Uh, hi! Linda! Linda! Baby! Darling! This is... This is a gift from God! Supergirl said she'd save you. I was so rude to her, but she did it! Yeah, yeah, Supergirl did. Oh, costume sticking out. But why were you in the closet? I, uh, I heard a noise at the door and it kind of spooked me. With what you've been through, I can't say I'm surprised. We thought you'd been killed. Give me five minutes to change and then we'll get caught up. No rush, honey. Now that we have you back, I want to spend all the time in the world together. Mwah! Kiss, kiss. Her parents leave. Sheesh. I thought when I morphed into Linda's form, the costume would change with me. But it didn't. I've got some major kinks to work out with this situation. I can't morph clothes. I merged with a murder victim, and now I've got parents. Definitely new territory. After Linda has dressed, she meets with her parents who are concerned about her lack of memories concerning her disappearance and insist she see a doctor. Suddenly, Linda sees a large demonic hand reaching for her. Honey, something wrong? D don't you see it? How can you not see it? The demon is ephemeral and the hand passes through her. Fred, you're right. She's obviously hallucinating about something. I'll get her bundled up. You get the car started. Though it is not fully real, it seems, the large horned demon and his world look very real to Supergirl. Damn you, Buzz. What are you playing at? I remain outside your plane. You said her blood was the final ingredient needed to help me traverse the distance. You said... I'll know what I said. She was the right person, but at the wrong time. Unexpected metahuman interference. Walking a chaos line is a delicate balance, Jackot. Not even I see all the threads until they're woven. I'm tired of your... Wait, did you hear that? They draw closer. I must hide. Hurry, blast you. Hurry! Soon at the hospital, Linda is examined and the doctor speaks with Maddie and her parents. And you are, miss? Maddie's an old friend of the family, doctor. She's helped mediate a few disputes in the past. She's kind of our good luck charm. You can speak in front of her. So, is Linda all right? 
Aside from the change in eye color, which can be ascribed to stress, she's perfect. Too perfect. There's no sign of concussion. However, there's also no scar from the appendectomy she had four years ago. No sign of that gunshot wound last year when she was mugged. It's either brilliant plastic surgery or... I don't know what. They're Linda's. They're my parents. And I feel like... Like I love them in a way I haven't before. But they also seem like strangers. My mind is splintered. So many memories to... Need help, love? Supergirl sees Buzz, and while he is also insubstantial, he triggers her memory. You're... you're not here! How many of us truly are all here? You're having problems sorting things out. Who is Linda Danvers, right? Allow me to help you recall. Well, love, what did you think? Was it everything I promised? What, what a rush! It was... Let's immortalize the moment on film, shall we? Remember, Humbert, keep the angle up this time. Right oh, sir. As the photograph of Linda and Buzz kissing falls to their feet, it joins two bodies with knives stuck in their backs. Did that scene help? You have no secrets from me, my dear. I know you to your core. I know your deepest wishes, your darkest secrets. I know that you wanted a soul, Supergirl, and now you have one. And it's a damned one, blackened and stained with the blood of innocence. Supergirl is awash in a flood of Linda's memories of blood and dark rituals. It can't be. It has to be a trick. Except it's not. I feel it as my mind comes together and blows apart at the same time. Linda was no victim, not at first. She was, she was part of it, an accomplice, a willing witness. She was evil. All right, Linda, there's a couple more tests I want to... Linda leaves through the window, dashes home, and changes into her costume, and soon Supergirl takes to the sky. Get out of my... Funny how things work out, isn't it? I was drawn to you over a year ago, Linda, knowing you'd be important. But I didn't know how important. Seducing you as Linda to the Chaos Cult was simply fun. But seducing you as Supergirl will be the true challenge. She chases Fuzz's ghostly image. It's your fault! Linda wasn't in control! She... She most certainly was. As much as you are now. Come to me, darling. Come to me. He leads her to an abandoned theater. Unpunished. For what they've done. For what they are. None of them will go unpunished. She crashes through the wall. <laughs> this time will be the last, huh? <laughs> oh my god only to find the huge cat-like demon from her vision stepping through the screen and the reporter who had been tracking Buzz's cult unconscious on the floor. I love chaos. It's so... chaotic. Hold still, little gnat, considering that your stubborn refusal to die interfered with my earlier attempt at crossing. It's only appropriate that your blood be the first to spill upon my arrival. Supergirl dodges a giant knife. <laughs> You're not here yet, Jackot. And if I'm too late to stop the spell that brings you through, then I'll just have to stop you personally. She flies into the demon's head, punching him back through his portal. <laughs> Space seems to implode around me, and just like that, I'm in another realm. A realm that stinks of distant, burning meat. Jackot picks Supergirl up in his jaws. <laughs> And then suddenly I'm airborne, but not under my own power. He shakes me like a cat worrying a mouse. <laughs> ah! A side blast pries his mouth open. <laughs> but he seems only momentarily phased. Slightly more cautious, but still confident. As his knife descends. 
Supergirl catches the huge knife by the blade. Uh, keep the hell off my planet! <laughs> your planet? Child, your planet has already been invaded. It has been for centuries. My people merely await my arrival, trying to stay one step ahead of our ancient foes during that time. Likewise, for centuries I've been on the run, hunted, hounded, always hounded. But thanks to Buzz and to you, my time is nearly at hand. Supergirl breaks off the tip of the blade. I will tear the living heart out of what once did not truly live and feast upon it, and in that way gain the final power I need for total conquest. Supergirl flies away as he stabs with the rest of the knife. <laughs> and this time, shattering the knife is too late to... She flies with it into Chakot's shoulder and then throws the blade with all her strength. <sighs> Droplets of Chakat's blood splatter along the path as the blade sails miles, perhaps to accomplish nothing or everything. She hits the demon's head with a flying haymaker. <sighs> My strongest punch only knocks him back about ten yards, and he lands on his blasted feet. What do you hope to gain in this battle? You must know you cannot defeat... Very well. I'll satisfy your curiosity. But you'll suffer the appropriate consequences. You said you'd been hounded, and I took the guess that you meant it literally. By sending your blood flying around. Gigantic, dog-like demons have arrived, towering over the buildings and Chaka. She put us on your scent. You gave us a good hunt, Chakot. Centuries worth of quest. But it ends here. No! Supergirl, save me! Supergirl flies away. A couple of months ago, there was a movie called The Truth About Cats and Dogs. I didn't see it. She flies back through the portal. But somehow... I doubt it nailed the real truth. That apparently what we see on our world is merely the tip of an iceberg, barely hinting at a war that crosses realities. Supergirl rescues the reporter before the theater explodes. <laughs> a war in which one side has had a fairly bloody setback this day. He recovers in the hospital. And as for me... I'd love to believe Buzz was lying about Linda, but deep down in my soul, I sense its truth. He didn't manufacture the darkness in Linda. He merely exploited it. Linda Danvers was a horrible, twisted person. God knows what atrocity she committed, and she'd be dead if I hadn't saved her. But maybe, somehow, she was chosen to be saved for some higher purpose. And I was chosen to be the instrument of that salvation. I'm bonded with her. Her essence, her consciousness, is a part of me. If there is some greater plan, I cannot rest until I find out what it is. Okay, people, move along. Nothing more to see. I hear sickos were behind this. I swear, this town is going straight to hell. Oh. Uh. Not straight, love, as detours planned. After all, getting there is half the fun, right? As Buzz strolls away, a cat and a dog threaten to start a fight. <coughs> These two issues take place during the final night, but it's odd, as Leesburg doesn't freeze to a dangerous degree like most of the planet, it only seems to experience a long eclipse of the sun leading the townspeople to turn into monstrous versions of themselves eventually being taken over and led by Gorilla Grodd. The town may not exist in perfect sync with the world around it, but partially on some metaphysical plane leading to this discrepancy. Grodd even takes over Supergirl by corrupting her human side, but her memories of her family set her free, and she soon defeats the villain as the sun reappears, 
and everyone goes back to normal, shaken by the experience of seeing their darkest urges set free. At the Leesburg Waste Recycling Plant, two weeks ago, a scientist's new project assumed the shape of a large baby, all on its own. Supergirl, in. Chemical imbalance. Kansas, today. A tenth revival preacher shouts at his congregation, Are you alive? The Lord wants to know if you're alive! And how are you going to know that? How, I ask you? You will know because as long as you're alive, you're doing the Lord's work! Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord! You will know because you hear my words, and in so doing, you will hear His words! Can I hear an amen? amen? Amen! I said, can I hear an amen? Amen! And you will know, my friends, you will know you're alive because you're willing to give. Give, my friends, give until it hurts because the Lord wants you to. He wants you to help me continue His good works. When you help me, then you help all of us get closer to God. Supergirl watches as the collection plate is passed. These people scraping a few dollars together to buy into his barnstorming rhetoric while he sports expensive jewelry. He wants to be closer to God. Let's see if a half-strength psi blast can bring him closer than he anticipated. <laughs> The preacher is thrown into the air and held against the side of the tent by Supergirl's psychokinetic force. Ah! I've gotten much more skilled with my side blasts. Luckily for the preacher, otherwise I'd have pulped him. Heh, <laughs> for someone with implicit faith, he got rather pasty-faced rather quickly. I hope his whimpering makes an impression on... May, let him down, now! Hmm, <sighs> nuts. He falls to the ground. What? There, that should teach him a lesson. Uh, a hallelujah! It's a miracle! A blessed miracle right before your eyes! The good Lord has supported me just as he wants you to! Bear witness and give, my friends! Give from the depths of your souls! Supergirl is shocked as the donations resume in earnest. Ah. Nobody wants to talk about the eclipse madness as people resume their normal lives. However, at the Leesburg Waste Recycling Plant, something abnormal is happening. All right, Denton, what's so all-fired important? It's our, uh, hem, waste purifier, Dr. Subbo. As you can see, it has continued to grow, roughly taking the shape of a giant humanoid. We've determined that this is Chemo, the creature that once almost destroyed Metropolis. If that's the case, we have to contact Washington at once. I beg to differ, Doctor. Chemo is regenerated from waters found on Leesburg Municipal Property. He is ours. I'm sure I don't have to spell out to you the value of a creature who can spontaneously transmute elements. Besides, Chemo at this time lies dormant, his chemical makeup inert. He is a monster no more. Chemo's finger begins to twitch. Why did you bring me to that meeting, Pa? Well, when you got here, you were talking about souls and God and so much religious stuff. I thought you were going a little over the top. So I thought you'd appreciate someone way over the top. If you ask me, that's not religion so much as a circus. Still, May, you shouldn't have done what you did. I know. It backfired something fierce, but he just, like, got to me with that stuff about being alive. He just used it to make money, but it's, you know, a serious subject to me. Is that why you've been asking us about God and souls and such? Did that sun business cause this, or is that something else? It's... How do I tell them? How do I tell them about my merging with Linda Danvers? How do I tell these two? who almost raised me on their own, who still call me May, about my other life, my other parents. It's fine, really. I'm sorry if I made this visit, you know, too heavy or anything. 
I better get going. You sure there's nothing we can do? I'll be fine. Just got some stuff I have to, you know, work out on my own. But thanks for everything. Mwah. Love you. Bye. Supergirl flies away from the Kent farm. <sighs> Say, Martha, since when did May start saying, you know? The girl's changed, Jonathan, no question. But the biggest change I see is that she clearly wants privacy, and I think we have to respect that. You know? As Kimo awakens, he has dim memories of his last battle. Are they here? No. No, they're gone. Just, just images. Fleeting. Forgotten. Part of the mix. He stands up and begins to move. <laughs> Denton, what have you done? Nothing, I swear. It's... Good God, get out! Move! Kimo is gigantic, three stories high as he begins to wander through the town, smashing through buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie barely drives away from the monster just as he notices her. <laughs> Linda skateboards down the street. The Reverend Varvo looks a little down today as I cruise past. Can't say as I blame him. The scorcher continues with no end in sight, and his window box garden is suffering. But there's not much even a supergirl can do about the weather. It's tricky enough just getting the hang of my skateboard again. Fortunately enough, a slight TK burst helps realign me whenever I... Hey, Danvers, got five minutes for an old pal? Cutter? I thought you were hospitalized. Takes more than that to keep me down. Speaking of which, I was just interviewing this guy, a survivor type, like me and you. I'll be taking over the electronic shop here. The previous owner had a mishap. Richard Malvern. Linda Danvers. The reporter introduces Linda to a red-headed young man, and they shake hands. Have we met Miss Danvers? I don't think so. Well, you know what they say. Sometimes you recognize people's souls from previous incarnations. So, Dicko, what you think of the town so far? Well, it seems kind of nice. Although, frankly, it's been getting a bit of a reputation. Mr. Cutter here says lately it's like the X-Files in these parts. Oh, I don't know about that. Sure, there's problems. But there's nothing happening in Leesburg that you wouldn't find in your average, typical, small, <laughs> bizarro town. Kimo steps into view, holding Maddie in his huge hand. Ah! You're just standing there, snapping pictures? You get used to it around here. Let's take a hint from Miss Danvers. She lit out of here like a jack... <laughs> Rabbit? Supergirl speeds past the guys in a whoosh of air. Ha! I knew she'd show up! I hear Maddie screaming nearly incoherent curses. I can't exactly blame her. His name's Chemo. Superman mentioned him. Plus, Lex Luthor had a dossier on him. At least, he called it a dossier. Now I think it was more of a wish list. She dodges as Chemo sprays acid at her. The acid lands on a car, melting it. Yep, his acid spitting is pretty much as was described. But curiously, the chemicals inside him never seem acidic on their own which makes taking him down fairly easy, based on what I've read. All I have to do is puncture him. His insides spill out, and that's it for chemo. And these weird regulator tubes should do the job. Supergirl lands on chemo and pulls the tube free. <sighs> Boop. Huh? Hey! I, I pulled the tube loose, but his body's sealing up around. Stop it! Knock it off! Supergirl is soon sucked inside him. Oh, hell. Don't panic. Don't panic. Ignore the burning in your lungs. This isn't hopeless. People on the street flee from the monster in terror. Oh, ah, TK Blast, give it all you've got. <laughs> Nothing. Not making a dent. New skin. Some sort of... Unbreakable. Air, 
right outside. Maddie, her eyes frantic. Think of something. Come on, Linda. You can do it. You can... You... You... Are you alive? Yes, I... I am. You are different from the others. They all mix, combine into two types. Human machine, metal machine. But yes, you are different. And I am different. Maybe we are alike in our difference. Am I like you? Am I alive? No, you're just a, a collection of chemicals. So are humans. No, they're more than that. They, they don't have to ask if they're alive. They know. But I want to be alive, to be like, like. Like me? Yes. But that will never happen. You're a freak accident. You'll never be any more than you are right now. Please, this can't be all there is. I'm sorry. And it screams in my heart, my head, my soul. It screams. Mo. <laughs> Supergirl erupts from chemo as he bursts open. Oh, God! Go loose. Don't be tense. Don't be tense! She catches Maddie as she falls from his hand. I feel something rush past me. Something like a great rushing of wings that chills me. And I watch in astonishment as Chemo hurtles upward. Whether of his own volition or drawn by another force, I can't tell. A tornado of chemicals whirls up from the shattered shell of Chemo, becoming a cloud once high in the air. And, as I observe it happen, one aching truth hangs over me. I lied. I lied to a creature in need. The cloud becomes a gentle rain. Is, is this from that monster? Is this acid rain or something? No, no, it's purified somehow. Perfectly good rainwater. And the people of Leesburg emerge, the danger past and a much-needed rain bathing them, caressing them like tears from God, giving them hope. Linda's dad, injured during the eclipse, recovers in the hospital. I told Chemo that it couldn't aspire to anything beyond a freakish half-life, but I didn't know for sure. I was faced with a being like me, wanting more, and I turned away. In doing so, I may have saved lives but at a cost to myself. And I can only pray that Chemo, in being denied what he sought here, ultimately found something greater. Reverend Varvel smiles as the rain brings his flowers to life. Trust Fund Rampage, the monstrous yellow form of Dr. Kitty Faulkner of Star Labs, falls off a bridge entangled with Supergirl. <laughs> Rampage leaves her in the water and resumes chasing a woman in a car. <laughs> Cars are on their sides on the streets of Leesburg as Superman himself catches up with the battle. <laughs> Meanwhile, Buzz watches as Richard Malvern is dealing with a painful condition. And the story goes back to when this all began, earlier today. A ball rolls in front of Linda on a park bench. Is this your ball? A small girl glares at Linda. Here you go. What's your name? She runs away. Hey, what's her problem? Wally, a young boy with a baseball bat, approaches Linda. Eh, she doesn't trust you. Kids have it drilled into them not to trust strangers, because you never know if strangers are hiding anything. I guess, yeah. Of course, there's all kinds of strangers. 
Sometimes people in the same family are strangers to each other, hiding secrets. Yeah, and some hiding more than others. Strangers in our own skin, not sure if they're living a life or a lie, trying to... Wait a minute. Why am I telling you this? Who are you, anyway? Hey, where'd you go? The boy has vanished. Who are you talking to, Miss Danvers? Oh, uh, hi. Richard Malvern, right? Right the first time, Miss Danvers. Mind if I sit and chat a spell? Only if you drop this Miss Danvers stuff. Name's Linda. Well, I was taught you don't use a lady's first name unless she gives the okay. <laughs> Consider it okay, Richard. Linda it is, then. And for me, it was Dick to my friends, back home in South Carolina. So is Leesburg real different from your hometown? Oh, no, no. Aside from the fact that they're nothing alike, they're exactly the same. <laughs> Something funny about that? I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I should learn to control myself. Control can be good, but it's got its downside, too. My dad was into controlling everything he could. He weren't a bad guy. He just kept saying he wanted us to be the best we could. And what's wrong with that? Well, that weren't really it. What he really wanted was for us to be the best he could be if he was us. He wouldn't let go of anything. Cost him his wife, family, everything. Fact is, some of the worst people have the best intentions. Hell, millions of people have died in the name of God. Dick throws the ball back to the girl. And who could have better intentions than God? Who indeed? Dr. Kitty Faulkner is told she's under investigation for embezzling funds from Star Labs. She figures out it could only have been her protege, and she readily admits that Kitty should never have trusted her, and says she'll go down for the crime as she walks out. Soon, Rampage begins chasing her car. I erupt from the river, water geysering everywhere, air burning in my lungs. How long was I out? How many seconds? Minutes? And have I been out too long to save that woman? That monster woman chasing her. I know her. Her name is... Rampage! But I thought she was one of the good guys. A friend of... Superman! Rampage stops when she sees Superman in the sky. That's enough, Rampage. I've cleaned up after your mess thus far, but I'm not going to tolerate any more of this. He grabs her arm. I know what's going on with Star, Kitty. I know what they're accusing you of, but you've got to get a hold of yourself. A situation like this doesn't call for berserker rage. It requires... <laughs> Superman is punched across town and slams into a supermarket sign. Ugh. Subtlety. Rampage catches the car and dumps her protege out. <laughs> ah. Then tosses the car away. She turns to the frightened woman. Supergirl hits Rampage with a TK blast. And flies in, ramming into her back. The rampage is over, Rampage. It ends here. Rampage backhands her away. No, it's never going to end. Not as long as there are gullible fools like Kitty Falter to believe in people and slime balls like Christine Bruckner to take advantage of them. Trust, faith, and promises from contracts to wedding vows. It's all garbage. Kitty raises her hands to smash Christine, but Superman grabs her wrists. For personal reasons, I certainly hope you're wrong about that. She betrayed me, used me. Do you have any idea how I feel? Yes, but you can't just... I mean, I can understand, but... Okay, Rampage, you win. She's all yours. Superman releases her. What? We can't bodyguard her forever. Sooner or later, you'll get her. Might as well be sooner. Are you crazy? No, I'm merciful. This will spare Miss Bruckner weeks, months of agonizing anticipation. It's a trick. You'll... 
Do what you feel is right, Kitty. Rampage raises her fists again. This is... This is insane! Kitty, I... God, no! Kitty, I'm sorry! Don't... Don't do it! Please! I'm... Superman! Do something! She brings them down. <laughs> smashing them into the pavement around Christine. I did do something, Miss Bruckner. I prayed. Superman talks to Kitty in her room, once again in her human form. And I just snapped. My intellect said, confront your accusers. But I felt betrayed and used and foolish. I believed in Chris because she and I... Well, I just did, that's all. And since I wimped out on hurting her... She's made it quite clear she's not confessing to anything. There are people on the Daily Planet who believe you. You can depend on them to take your side. I appreciate the sentiment, but right now, I don't know who to trust. Actually, it may not be a problem. Supergirl interrogates Christine high in the air, dangling her by one leg. Seven, five, eight, nine, Bank of Geneva! Okay, now tell me where the rest of the money you stole is. And then you'll tell them. Because if you don't, I'll find you. And no one else ever will. Trust me on that. I do! I do! You realize officially I can't condone your coercing a confession from Miss Bruckner. Oh, look who's talking, Mr. She's All Yours. Of course, you knew I wouldn't really have left her vulnerable. Uh-huh. So when you shielded her at super speed... I wasn't surprised. Thanks for the vote of confidence. May, Ma and Pa are a little worried about you. And you aren't? Well, why Leesburg, of all places? Has something happened I should know about? Any problems? Why, Superman, if there was anything you really needed to know about, don't you think I'd tell you? Supergirl flies away. <sighs> Mom? I'm walking a fine line here. I don't want you controlling my life, but I want you to know I trust you. So, set up the blind date. Just not right away. There might be another guy. Oh, I'm so pleased, and you won't be sorry, honey. I have this gut feeling that you and Mr. Aldrin will just hit it right off. Dick Malvern continues to struggle with his condition. Freaking childproof aspirin bottles. It's not all they fair, is it? A man so young, dealing with such a nasty, painful disease. Huh, how do you? Name's Buzz, and I'm here to help. Hey, trust me. Art History The world of Linda Danvers is a strange one. I should know. It's my world now. But a part of her still feels separate from me, like it's hiding in some dark corner. Maybe by studying her old art I can drag that part of her into the light, get a good look at it, and hope it's not too weird. Linda? Honey? You down there? Um, Mom? Yeah, I'm here. The morph to Linda gets easier each time. Wonder if that's good or bad. Linda! Linda. Hi, Mom. Dad, what's up? Linda looks down, realizing she's still wearing her Supergirl costume under her open shirt. No! Oh, no! Stupid, 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 stupid! This, I, I can... Cool t-shirt. Supergirl fan again, huh? You know, Linda, you're definitely getting bigger. I, well, I... We thought we'd find you down here when there was no answer from your apartment. Oh, I just... My, it's stingy down here. Why don't I let in some... Sylvia opens the curtains to reveal the window is boarded up. Light. Oh, well, dingy is fine. I guess that helps you concentrate. Anyway, the reason we're here is to invite you over for dinner this evening. Mom, I... No blind dates or anything, I promise. Let me... Here it is. Fred finds a statue of an angel. I was wondering what happened to this. Hey, Linda, bring back any memories? Oh, yes. 
Supergirl lives through Linda's memories of before she met Buzz and became corrupted. She wins first place for the angel statue, and Reverend Meek's wife praises her for her talent. Linda witnesses the Reverend Meek beating his wife, who later leaves him for another man, earning him the sympathy of their community. Linda then also witnesses the Reverend moving out a rolled-up carpet marked with blood and cloth from his wife's dress. Her preconceptions of the world and what good means are deeply shaken. Seems like ages ago, doesn't it? What? This. We were so proud. Your mother especially. Oh, that. So, can we expect you tonight? Yeah, sure. But is it okay if I don't come alone? There's this guy I met and... Of course. It's about time you started dating again instead of hanging out with those weirdos you used to. He's not one of those weirdos, is he? No, Dad. And it's not exactly dating, either. Well, I don't know. It was just supposed to be the three of us. Oh, come on, Sylvia. You're just myth because you won't be bringing that Aldrin guy you're always raving about. Bring who you want. We'll see you around seven. The Danvers is leave. I'm almost relieved to get out of Linda's skin as I switch back to Supergirl. Except I feel myself still in her skin, even more than before. I had thought I could redeem a life gone wrong, bring light to a darkened soul, and benefit us both. But perhaps that's arrogant, as if I'm so perfect that making Linda more like me automatically brings her soul closer to heaven. Instead, we might both be dragged kicking and screaming in the other direction. Linda told no one what she saw, I guess because Meek had been so revered by her. Or maybe someone kept her silent. Not her parents. Certainly not Maddie. Oh, God. Of course. Supergirl finds a statue of Buzz, unlocking more of Linda's memories. Oh, come on, Linda. You can't sit over here on your own. I'm okay, really. I can hear the Reverend fine. A little too well, actually. Linda's friends leave her alone under a tree. Just listen to that pile of dribble. Buzz speaks to her from in the tree. The hypocrisy of it. Churches through the centuries have robbed, persecuted, tortured, and murdered their way across the world, stopping only to collect valuables and play politics. And they stand up and tell us to do what they say, or we're evil. And God's going to have our guts for God us. Who are... He jumps down. Then when someone like you or I discovers the truth, some dirty little secret, what can we do? Hey, nothing. I mean, who'd believe us? If enough people knew, then... The greatest abomination committed by man was performed in the name of God. Egged on by pompous boors like the Reverend Bleak and their promises of eternal salvation. What a deal. It's meek, and even if he is a... Well, people should still believe in... Believe? He's got nothing but that. No facts. He thumps the Bible as if it were the word of God instead of men. Men like him. But my mom says it. Don't break this to Mumsy, but that thing was knocked together in Rome by politicians. Obeying the masses and all that. How can you say that? The Bible is... A tool. Be meek. Be poor. You'll be rewarded when you're dead. Wake up. My friend Al used to say, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole law. Remember that. Linda runs away in fear. Do what thou wilt. Weeks pass during which she mentally replays the conversation, analyzing every word, because somehow she senses that he'll turn up again. He scares her, but fascinates her too, and this guy seems to know the answers to questions she didn't even know she had. Buzz greets Linda on the street, and she leaves her friends behind to go off with him, and he takes her to his cult's house. This place, my dear Miss Danvers, is home. Inside are people wearing fetish gear and a large orgy before a fire and animal skulls which adorn the walls besides the cult symbol. Linda Danvers goes to church. Linda Danvers reads only good books. Linda Danvers has never even kissed a boy. To Linda Danvers, this place is evil, which is scary. And it is attractive, 
which is terrifying. I, please, just take me home. Ah, oh, Linda, you haven't given us a chance. Have a look around for five minutes. Then, if you want, I'll take you back to Saccharinsville. Is that a deal? The door closes. And so begins Linda's initiation into a darker world. A world which grows darker still as the years pass, as new secrets were revealed. Gradually, the macabre becomes commonplace. And the horrific? Well, that was a laugh. Linda attends a gathering in the woods with Buzz and his friends, where he informs Linda he saw Reverend Meek today acting innocent while continuing to influence people, and it sets her off. Linda begins ranting about how someone should kill him, and Buzz innocently asks her who that should be. Oh, Linda, you never stood a chance. Supergirl throws the Buzz statue out the window and into a tree. <laughs> I just wish he'd give him a chance. He's such a nice young man. The days of Linda listening to us are long gone, Sylvia. At least she's coming. It wasn't all that long ago that... That she was lost to us, I know. But God brought her back to us to guide her. And I, for one, will not neglect my duty. Yes, dear. The sunlight reminds me how cold it is down here. Maybe it's time to leave before I find something that really... A shaft of light from the statue hole shines on a horrific statue of beings writhing in pain. What is that? More memories coming involuntarily now. What surprise? Ah, here it is. A van pulls up in the woods and cultists get out with two people with bagged heads and a small trunk. Events unfold and Linda's confusion gives way to... Horror. The bags are removed. Meek, and a woman I don't know, though Linda does. Her hatred burns like fire. So, what do you think? Danvers, oh, you wait till I get out of this. You're going to be so sorry. You'll think that last time was a birthday present. Oh, no, Linda, she's really mad. Gee, I didn't... Hang about. Did you say, when I get out of this? Ah. Oh. What a relief. If you're planning on soiling those lovely knickers, now might be the appropriate time. Buzz opens up the trunk to reveal a set of knives, the knives Linda used to murder them as Supergirl saw in an earlier memory, thus corrupting her soul. I can't change the past, but the evil that was Linda's old life can rest here. Supergirl hurls the statue deep into a lake. Forever. Hello? Hi, Dick. It's Linda. Oh, hi, Linda. What can I do for you? Well, I was wondering if you're free tonight. Buzz magically prevents poor young Richard from reaching his date or calling Linda. I don't believe it. First the car dies, now the phone gives up. I sure know how to make a good impression. He sure knows how to make a good impression. I don't understand. I gave him the number. Well, at least you found out what sort of young man he is. Not like that nice Mr. Oh. Uh, Sylvia, why don't you give Linda that package? Oh, yes. I'd completely forgotten. It just came for you. Sylvia opens a box sent to Linda, and inside it is a statue she just put in the lake. Who's it from, dear? The card shows a psychotic-looking bee. It's tonight? The blind date is tonight? Oh, Ma, how could you just spring it on me? It was somewhat last minute, Linda. Mr. Aldrin had a hole in his schedule. Besides, and please don't take offense. Oh, how could I ever? But I'll bet that Mr. Aldrin is responsible enough not to leave us hanging. Ma, I told you, Dick had car trouble the other day. A responsible person would have checked to make sure his car was working before he got stuck. Your mom's right. 98% of breakdowns can be avoided with routine maintenance. Dad, it drives me nuts when you make up statistics. Ding dong. Linda, could you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Might as well be graceful about this. And besides, Mom is good people. How bad can this guy be? 
Linda opens the door. Face it, Tigress. You just hit the jackpot. My dinner with Buzz. Are you out of your mind? I know, I know. Arriving a couple minutes early, it's insanely rude. But I didn't just want to sit out in the car and wait. It's chilly, my heat is broken, and I prefer much warmer surroundings. Are we eating on the front stoop then, or are you going to invite me in? Drop dead! There is no way you are dragging my parents into the middle of this. Buzz, you made it. And on time, too. Nice to know some people are punctual. A night of hobnobbing with you, Miss Danvers? What kind of beast would I be if I were late? Now how many times do I have to tell you? It's Sylvia. Fred, company's here. Linda slams the door. <laughs> I'll kill him. He's a soulless monster. Every second that I don't take him down is another second Mom and Dad are in jeopardy. But what if he wants me to attack? Blast him. I don't know what move to make. Mom, don't open it. What? What? That cake box. He brought it. Don't open it. Why not? Linda dashes and grabs Buzz's box from her mother to open it herself. Oh, my! Linda, what's gotten into you? Mom, you don't understand. It could be... could be, a uh, fattening, maybe. Flan. It's a sort of pudding thing. You obviously piqued Linda's interest, Buzz. Linda, it's not like I was going to eat it now. I was just curious. Well, perhaps Linda was thinking about what curiosity did to the cat. In any event, there's my contribution to this evening. Flan. It looks very good. It's flantastic. Oh, Puzz, you're terrible. Uh -huh. Actually, Mom, he's positively evil. Linda's right, Mom. Six kinds of pure demonic intent. That's me. Unlike Linda, of course. She's just a super girl. Well, if the evil demon and the super girl would care to join us, dinner is now being served. Buzz takes Linda's hand. You're lucky I don't crush your fingers. You're lucky you don't crush my fingers. Leave you with a bit of explaining to do. They all join Fred at the table. Isn't that cute, Fred? They're already whispering to each other, sharing secrets. Let's not overdo it, okay, Sylvia? Please excuse my wife, Buzz. She sees romance everywhere. Well, I guess that's why we get along, Fred. I'm the same way. How about you, Linda? Linda glowers at Buzz. We say, save the planet, as if we matter to the planet. We do everything we can to build ourselves up. The higher we climb, the further we think we can run from our basically silly nature. It's really just an extension of the frozen snowball theory. Three billion years from now, the Earth will be a frozen snowball. So what does it matter what we do? That's pretty damned fatalistic, Buzz. Then again, I bet you're the expert on damned. Excuse me for being suspicious, but do you do know each other? Now, oh, Fred, does anyone really know anyone? Buzz looks at his demonic reflection in his suit. After the soup, Fred tells a story in the living room. Though the building's burning around me, I got a screaming kid slung over my shoulder, facing a drug-crazed junkie who wants to cut me. If the roof hadn't caved in on the junkie, that would have been all she wrote. And they gave you this citation for bravery. Yeah, well, I was doing the job. Were you scared? Of course. I was afraid I'd cash it in. No one wants to die. Wouldn't have been braver if he hadn't been scared. Just stupidity. And what scares you, Linda, if I may ask? My family in danger. Mom, Dad, anything that might harm them scares me. But you probably knew that. What scares you, Buzz? You strike me as someone who's seen a lot of scary stuff. I've been around a bit, yes. But you couldn't begin to imagine what I've seen. I've seen... I've seen the bodies of pious women and children pulled out of churches, destroyed by earthquakes, crushed while praying for the Lord's mercy. 
I've seen victims of violence writhing in the throes of damnation because they falsely blamed themselves for their misfortunes. I've seen people eviscerated, beheaded, crippled, and crucified. I've frozen to death and boiled to death. My body's been racked with disease, my soul blackened with corruption, and various violent demises played and replayed infinite times. What scares me, Linda? What scares me is that nothing scares me anymore. I'm speaking metaphorically, of course. Where did you find this guy? He's creepy. Fred, don't you get it? He's a student of human behavior. He says outrageous things to see people's reactions. Linda will warm to him. You'll see. Linda finds a moment alone with Buzz. Get out! Now! Before we've even gotten to the flan? What an absurd... Cut the crap! She turns to Supergirl and slams his head on a desk. <clears throat> Enough! You hear? Enough! You're a murderer! A monster! I should pulp you here and now! Have fun explaining my most remains. Uh, maybe I don't care. If you didn't, you'd have done it by now. And you would have told your parents about your little reanimation stunt on their darling daughter by now. That's your problem, Linda. You care too much. Kill me. Go ahead. You know you want to. That's the difference between us, Linda. I know what I am and embrace it. You know what you aren't and reject it. Stop talking like a fortune cookie. Who are you? What are you? Fred opens the door, hiding Linda behind it. Dinner, you two. Sounds spiffy, Fred. Where's Linda? Around, I'm sure. After he's left. I really hate you. Good. Hate is better than love. Lovers can betray you. With enemies, you know where you stand. All right. Um, Shirley MacLaine. Ugh. <sighs> Please, too easy. She was in Postcards from the Edge with Meryl Streep, and Meryl Streep was in The River Wild with Kevin Bacon. So you can't really connect any actor to Kevin Bacon in six steps or less? That's how six degrees of Kevin Bacon works. How about you, Linda? Try and stump me. You. Me what? Connect yourself to Kevin Bacon. I'm not an actor. But you are, in a way, aren't you? Acting one way when your true nature is another? I could say the same for you. For anyone, really. We all have our public face and private darker side. And what do you think my darker side is? Oh, I don't think such things are anyone's business. Do you, Fred? I get enough of it on the job. Oh, come on, Buzz. I look at you and I feel like, like you know so much about me. Like we connect on so many levels. And yet, I know nothing about you. Don't bother, Linda. He'll probably say something outrageous again. Sylvia says that's how you are, Buzz. She knows me so well. I could tell you I'm a defrocked priest. Or a reformed serial killer. Or, oh, here's one. You'll love this. A couple of years back, Lucifer closed up hell. All the demons... Every damned soul cleared out. Most of them, the dummies, went to Earth, since that's where Lucifer went. But a handful trod the universe, and one, one became a businessman. He became an agent of chaos. Like on Get Smart? Yes, Sylvia, just like. You see, stirring up trouble was in his nature. Now he could do so while protecting his future. But as chaotic as he was, he needed an opposite, a force of order to oppose him, a heavenly being to balance his hellishness. Heavenly beings? You're talking about... Angels, my dear Linda. But, you see, the demon, he had ties to humanity, for he was human once. So the angel needed ties to humanity as well. And whereas the demon, believe it or not, had a streak of good he fought to overcome. So did the glowing angel require a streak of evil. 
Am I the only one here who has no idea what any of you mean? Fire and brimstone theology, Fred, like the kind preached by the minister in Footloose, which, by the way, starred Kevin Bacon. So I guess you can connect me, after all. Fred and Sylvia go to the kitchen, leaving Linda and Buzz alone. Do you seriously think I'll just let you leave here? You've killed God knows how many people, including Linda, sort of. You summoned demons, you... Treat me as you will. It's your choice. Am I supposed to believe that, that insane story? That you're a demon and I'm an angel? Again, it's your choice. God did give you all free will. Boneheaded move, that. Be aware, though. Time is running out. Is that a threat? No. It's dramatic imperative. Fred and Sylvia enter with dessert. It's the man with the plan. What's this dramatic imperative you were discussing? We were just discussing fiction, weren't we, Linda? Sure. Why not? I was explaining dramatic structure. Many stories are somewhat formulaic. Movies in particular. Let's say that you have two people who are involved in some sort of major ongoing struggle. Let's call them, I don't know, Buzz and Linda. There's more of you being outrageous, Buzz? Afraid so, Fred, but I'll try to rein it in. Dad, Mr. Aldrin should have the first of the plan. Of course. Got to make sure it's safe. So, where was I? Major ongoing struggle. Yes, of course. Right. Well, under the formula, that struggle would be divided into three acts. The first act would introduce the characters, and there would be some catalytic event that sets things in motion. An event such as... Well, it doesn't matter. An event. The second act features the struggle between the two of them in various ways, in different arenas. And then we get to the second act, turning point. Which is... Which is... Where? No, which is? Oh, whew, of course. Well, the second act turning point features a major event which sends the story into an unexpected direction, and also sets a ticking clock into motion as we head into the third act. Something happens which imposes a time limit on the resolution. In other words, things get so bad that the problem has to be solved immediately before everything goes kaboom. Understand? I... I guess so. Somewhat. If you'd like, I'd be happy to give you a practical demonstration. This has been enchanting, really, and I can't thank you enough for having me over. You're good people. Don't ever change. And Linda, you're divine. Hold it. What were you just saying about a practical demonstration? Oh, that. Yes. The wall explodes inward, knocking over everyone except Buzz, and a pale figure enters in a whirlwind. <sighs> this is Tempus, as in Tempus Fugit. Time flies. And he does fly, as you see. He does many other equally exciting things. This is the second act turning point, and things will have to be resolved quickly, because time has run out. Wally, you seem a little distracted tonight. It's nothing, Grams. Oh, I have to go out after dinner, okay, Grams? A friend needs me. What friend, Wally? Or are you going to be mysterious again? Well, I do like to move in mysterious ways. So, is it okay? Well, then, I guess it's okay. Don't stay out too late, though. Thanks, Gramps. Wally runs off with his baseball bat. Should we be worried that Wally is so peculiar? Worried? Why, I'm thrilled he has any friends. Tempest, Fugit. This is my fault. All my fault. I sat here, hesitating to make a move, as Buzz sat not five feet away, eating dinner, calm as you please. And I was afraid of blowing my identity. I should have ripped him to shreds, and Mom and Dad have paid for my mistake. 
Linda dodges Tempest's blade as it swipes past her face. Time always flies, Linda, and fatally so. It cuts down young and old, uncaring. Show her, Tempest. Tempest looked familiar. No time to think about it. A side blast should take care of him while I see to... <laughs> Tempest flies back out the hole he came in through. Gone! But I hear him in my head, saying... The time has come, Linda. Come for you, your friends, for all of Leesburg. You, me, and Tempest in one final dance. Fred gets up. Dad! Dad, you okay? I'm fine. I'll get 911 on the phone. You see to your mother. What? What happened? Buzz? Who? He's a bad man, Mom. One of the worst. I don't understand. I'm usually such a good judge of people. How could I have been so wrong? Amulet is on the way. Dad, I'm going after Buzz. After him? What are you? I can't let him get away, and you're not in shape to run after him. Linda, the man's nuts. You can't nab him on your own. I swear, I won't. I'll just follow him. And the second I see a cop or Supergirl, I'll point him out and let them do the rest. He and that other lunatic wrecked a house. I can't. You can't let the bad guys get away. Wonder who you got that from. For God's sake, be careful. I love you. He hugs her. I love you too, Daddy. All right, they're squared away, and help should be here soon. But Tempest and Buzz may be miles away from here by... Suddenly the house explodes in a huge fireball. <laughs> Tempest laughs in the sky as he clashes his sides together, firing another bolt of energy. Linda flies into the wreckage. Tempest talks to Buzz on the roof. We had a bargain, Buzz. You promised us a fallen angel within a specific term. The term grows short, and default would not be wise. I won't be in default. We want her. We want the promise kept. If you default... I said I won't, all right? And don't bleed threaten me. I said you'd have her, and I meant it. Your tone doesn't match the certainty of your words. You do not have feelings for her, do you? Don't be idiotic. Now sort off and let me do the job. Very well. A black ichor leaves Tempest. Buzz? What happened? Don't ask questions. I've worked too hard to see it fall apart now. Maddie should be in the hospital a lot now. That's obviously the next... Huh. Buzz sees Wally watching them from the street. Tempest, nail that annoying-looking child. I don't like the cut of his jib. Tempest clashes his sides together, firing a bolt of energy at Wally. <laughs> he swings his baseball bat, knocking the energy back towards Buzz. He narrowly dodges it. Bloody hell! Jeez, they, they couldn't have survived. Nothing could have. What is that? Supergirl blasts out of the destroyed house like a rocket, trailing fire behind her into the sky. <sighs> Looked like a comet or, or God only knows what. Her speed puts the fire out. He's down there, down there somewhere. The monster I've suffered to live, and others have suffered because of it. He's dead, so help me God, he's dead. I don't want to be Supergirl anymore. Supergirl, let him live. I don't know why I did, but I did, and I shouldn't have. To hell with Supergirl. Supergirl died with the Danvises. I'm Linda Danvers, Linda who died in flames, reborn in flames. I know evil. I was evil. 
and I know the only thing that evil understands. Punishment. Punishment and death. Supergirl crashes through the wall of the hospital before Tempest can get to Maddie. <sighs> you're his harbinger, his messenger. Well, now you're going to bring a message back to him. And you won't have to memorize it, you creeping sack of slime. Because your shredded corpse will be message enough. She fires her side blast again. <laughs> Tempest blocks it with his scythe. <laughs> Fire. Fury. I like that. You caught me once. Not again. Time heals all wounds, but not this time, and not these wounds. He slashes her stomach. <laughs> he cut me. Cut me twice. He shouldn't have been able to do that. He slices through my side defenses as if they're not even there. Was it against my will, or did I allow it? as if I need the final pain to drive me forward, to do what my soul screams to do. Tempest brings his blades down, but Supergirl catches them, <sharp inhale> drawing blood from her hands. Screams, screams with the pain of loss, the fury of vengeance, denied but demanded. Images of her loved ones, but corrupted, come to Supergirl as she struggles with Tempest. Yes. As his cloud surrounds me, as I see the world as it truly is. Supergirl died with Linda instead of saving her. We're burning together. It's all been a joke, a sick cosmic joke. I understand the world now. It makes so much sense. It's all sickness and depravity wherever you look. That's the reality of it. All it takes is the guts to see it that way. And that's what Supergirl provided. The bravery to meet the world on its own twisted level. We look to the skies, look to the super beings to give us hope. But at the end of life, we sink beneath the earth and God and his heroes laugh down at us all. Because God is insane and he made us in his own image. Linda's face dispels the others as she speaks to her. No, you're wrong. I was wrong. I, I've seen the world through your eyes, seen so much, seen what you aspire to, what humanity aspires to. God, Supergirl, you thought you weren't human. You're the most human creature I've ever met. You've learned. I've learned it doesn't mean anything. I sacrifice and people die. I show mercy and people die. Love begets hate. Trust begets betrayal. No more. It ends here. It ends here. No mercy. No mercy. Because now they die for their sins. I'll leave their bodies in ruins. And let God worry about their souls. Tears of blood spill from Supergirl's eyes as they burst into flame. Buzz addresses the lords of chaos he serves as a dark storm swirls around him. She's almost there. She's almost ready. Are you happy now? Are you finally happy? Tampering with a creature like that. It's like painting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. You'll have your angel, Dark Lord. And I hope you choke on her. Tempest flies through a brick wall, followed by Supergirl, her eyes aflame. Boom! K keep back. You sound afraid, Tempest. Good! Supergirl floats before a terrified Tempest, arms extended, blood dripping from her palms and spilling from her flaming eyes as the black ichor swirls around her. Keep back! God, keep back! After what you've done, you, you ask for God's help? How dare you? She punches him in the jaw and the blackness spews from it. <clears throat> Supergirl continues to attack him with brute savagery, the corrupted faces of her loved ones cheering her on. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's it, Linda. That's my girl. 
I saw the potential in you the moment we met. And in you too, Supergirl. I knew that you would make the perfect team. We just needed a meeting of minds. Kill him, lover. Do him. Finish the dance and leave with the partner what brung you. Don't let him stop you. Don't let what you once were, what you once aspired to be. Don't let that stop you either. Don't. Don't let. Don't let me stop you, Supergirl. Don't. Don't. Supergirl. Don't. I feel stronger and stronger, drawing power from all around me. And he's helpless before me. There will be justice. Vengeance. Vengeance for... for... Is this what you want, Angel? When all's said and done? It's my way, sure. And it was Linda's way. Except maybe it's not anymore. Which makes you the swing vote. As in whether you swing that fist or not. Do you make Linda's way yours, or your way hers? Here and now, Angel, you'll finally, truly become one. The only question is, one what? Huh. She pauses. You idiot! We had her! We had her! She merely had to kill our proxy and she would have been ours. Her potential, her untapped power, all ours. You promised us, Buzz. You promised, and you will pay. Wait, we can work something else out. Wait, ah! A bolt of lightning strikes Buzz, and the swirling energy becomes a vortex, carrying him away. He's torn away, and I should feel nothing but relief, joy. He's getting what's coming to him, whatever that is. Punishment beyond anything I could inflict. But there has to be more than that. There has to be understanding, and I... I have to save him. I have to understand. Supergirl flies into the vortex after him. Why? Why? I'm clean out of answers, angel love. Sometimes you have to take things on faith. Lightning crashes at its end, and Buzz is gone. Back on the ground, Supergirl lies next to Tempest, transformed back into Richard Malvern. Wally finds them, and the sound of a phone ringing can be heard. Linda wakes up. D Dick Malvern? Of course. He was Tempest, enthralled to Buzz. But how did we get in my apartment? How did... Boing! All right, I'm coming. Jeez. Uh, hello? D Dad? Dad? Linda, you're still there? I thought we were having dinner tonight. Are, are you and Mom okay? Of course we're okay. Yes, the house, too. What kind of question is... Yeah, I guess we can make it another night. Fine. Sure. Ching. I tell you, Sylvia, Linda is the flightiest girl I've ever known. Completely irresponsible. I know, Fred, but she's all ours, and we have to trust and love her. You make a child, do the best you can, and then just have faith it will all work out in the end. Wally walks off into the sunset. His job complete, for now. The End There's something to be said for a well-used deus ex machina, no matter the time or place, and I think that's just what we have here. Wally is indeed an avatar of God, or a conglomeration of all gods, as he later puts it. And he did indeed make all the bad things that happened have just been a dream. That's the kind of power gods get to wield in the world of this story, and as you're about to see, it's only the beginning of the trend of characters in this book changing the reality around them. Supergirl would run for 80 issues, and she would undergo many changes of state as the book went on, and I'll cover the most important of those now, in order to give you a sense of the overall nature of the book, and hopefully entice you to read it on your own. And if not that, then at least you'll know what all the different versions of Supergirl presented here are, and how they all ended up. Because that's the other purpose of this outro, is to give a satisfying ending to the character of Matrix Supergirl, and to really do that, there's a lot we have to go over. 
Don't take that as a bad thing, though. I love this book specifically because of how weird and unique it is. Peter was given free reign to shape his little corner of the DC universe, and he really ran with it. Her first major transformation was her flame wings. Supergirl first manifested them in battle with Despero when pushed beyond her limit, just like Goku when he turned Super Saiyan. Although her wings signified that Heaven had recognized her selflessness and had chosen her of one of three Earth-born angels who would be important later on in the grander war with demonic forces. Wally genuinely does have a hotline to Heaven and it's made known his judgment was a factor in her being chosen. It is also revealed that a chaos stream runs underneath Leesburg and is the reason reality is thin here and the supernatural holds more sway than elsewhere. It's a lot like the Hellmouth under Sunnyvale in Buffy the Vampire Slayer but connected to DC's Lords of Chaos, which count as demons in their war against the Lords of Order, who are the power source for several heroes, notably Dr. Fate. But as I said, Leesburg is sort of in its own little plane of reality, and Supergirl's allies will all come from here. She had very little interaction with the outside DC universe during this run. The first of those allies, and actually another of the three Earthborn Angels, is Comet, whose identity is a mystery at first, and is even thought perhaps to be a horse, since they do share a name with the Silver Age Supergirl's pet superhorse, Comet. But that's just a little joke of Peter's, and Comet's identity turns out to be a female comedian named Andy, whom Supergirl dates for a short time. Andy was a jockey who was injured badly and rebuilt by a mad scientist with horse DNA, granting her the ability to transform between human and this alien-looking form and to move at super speed and use super strength. Until Andy is mysteriously kidnapped, and she has disappeared for now. Supergirl was then confronted with her first evil duplicate, her own form of Bizarro, and it's all the discarded proto-matter from when she merged bodies with Linda in the first issue, grown into a body and with some sort of sentience and malicious intent for being thrown away. She attacked the townspeople until she was stopped by Supergirl, and then she attacked her, re-merging their bodies together. The police were completely helpless, their guns meant nothing to this evil Supergirl, and their bullets all came flying back at them. Superman thankfully arrives to oppose her and keep the people safe from her rampage, while he and Linda's father try to reach the Supergirl and the Linda they know. Inside her mind and heart, the spirits of Linda Danvers and Supergirl connect to one another and merge their spirits as well as their bodies, and flame wings wrap around them both as they summon their inner strength. Suddenly an arm bursts from the corrupted Supergirl's mouth. Linda claws her way out of the protomatter form as it dissolves around her and becomes a fiery mass of sludge. Superman wraps her naked body in his cape as she transforms to the Supergirl he knows. You're Linda, I take it? So, sometimes and other times, she transforms to Supergirl. Why didn't you tell me? How could you not tell me? I'm sorry, I should have. I didn't know how. I... Here, you'll want to put this on before everybody else comes, too. Daddy? I... I was so scared. It's okay. It's over. Fred hugs her, happy that his daughter is alive, even if she is merged with Supergirl. It turns out the person who kidnapped Comet is the third Earthborn Angel with wings of brilliant blue light. She had been misled by earthly agents of the Lords of Chaos, and Supergirl eventually finds Comet and frees her. The three Earthborn Angels are finally needed for the larger battle when a huge and powerful demonic entity known as the Carnivore comes through towards the plane of Earth after securing a beachhead in Heaven itself. They unite their powers and stand strong against a horde of demons which pour through a gateway. As he turns morality backward with the power of God itself, the angels attack the city Carnivore has created between Heaven and Earth. In Heaven he is too powerful to attack, the connection to Earth is his weak point making the Earthborn Angels our best line of defense. Supergirl is the Angel of Fire, Comet the Angel of Lightning, and the third is the Angel of Light, and their power comes from the same source as Carnivore, which is what allows them to damage him from within, making his own power turn against him, and finally making him halt his attack. During the battle, Supergirl sacrifices herself, and she is fearless as he drives his massive blade through her very soul. Carnivore asks her if she still wishes to forgive him for his sins, and she says, of course, and her infinite mercy shocks him as she kisses him. Matrix Supergirl merges her own spirit with the carnivore. It ends his threat as they transform together into something new, and Matrix Supergirl sacrifices her memories and her identity, everything she's been through over 50 issues of the comic, 
and ascends to become a celestial being. Her wings become that of a proper angel for just a moment before they, too, disappear. Linda Danvers is left behind, naked on earth, surrounded by soft feathers, as she has been returned to the alley outside a poultry butcher. Buzz greets her there, and he has been made into a mortal without any of his demonic power. Just as Linda is also no longer Supergirl, Matrix has vanished into a higher plane of existence, leaving Linda alone. Buzz hands Linda a letter he was given, by God apparently, addressed to her. Linda decks Buzz and learns that she still has some super strength to go with her still blue eyes. The letter reads, Dear Linda, and you are more dear to me than I think I ever truly let you know. The first thing you should know is, all's right with the world, thanks to you. Everyone had a part to play, as everyone always does, but yours was the most difficult, and you handled it beautifully. As did Blythe and Andy, I rewarded them by rescuing them from the Between City just before it went up. Furthermore, although they remain earthborn angels, they need never fear their power overwhelming their souls as you did. I felt it the least I could do. Andy is making peace with her mother, and Blythe has her own demons to attend to. I wish them both well. As for Supergirl, well, that's a bit more complicated. The world knows that she died in mighty combat against a foe of unimaginable power. Think of it as an inherited and planted memory, like being afraid of the dark, a retroactive bit of continuity, as it were. She has, I'm afraid, fallen. Nothing could stop that. There is, however, hope, but it won't be easy. You'll have to risk yourself in the same way that she risked herself to save you. I doubt your parents will be thrilled to see you leave, having just believed they lost you, although, trust me, they'll have more than enough to occupy them in the next few months, especially your mom. And I know you just got a new place with Maddie. Wouldn't want to leave her in the lurch. Might want to send her the rent in advance, because frankly, who knows how long you'll be gone. Well, I know, but who else? Here's the situation. Supergirl exists in a manner of speaking. You'll have to follow the chaos stream to get to her. The stream flows much further than you ever thought. You're probably wondering how you'll follow it. Don't worry, I've given you a guide. Sensing the chaos stream is the one power I've left him. You have a few powers left to you as well. Use them to keep him in line. He has potential. Just like a lost girl named Linda once did. Whether you believe I'm the Almighty, a cherub with delusions of grandeur, or a young carnivore before he turned bad, believe this, that I will always be your friend. Wally, the God Boy. Matrix had become something I can't properly explain, nor can she. The essence of Supergirl, perhaps, or a patron saint, one connected to all versions that have ever existed, something on the level of a goddess. She will be seen again, but this is when it becomes Linda's story alone for most of the rest of the run, from issue 51 onwards to issue 80 and the end. Matrix Supergirl had indeed fallen from her status as a hero when she learned to kill for revenge. The injustice of humans became too much for her to bear, and that's really all that need be said regarding the matter but heaven has forgiven her that when she sacrificed herself to save the world, and allowed her to gift the mantle and some of the powers of Supergirl to Linda to use on her own, for she had proven herself as well. Matrix's long mission to save Linda's soul was a success, even if it cost her the purity of her own in the process. Soon, Linda is called into action by circumstance when the multiplying villain Riot attacks a mall she's in. Linda runs into a hip fashion store and steals a blonde wig, a white S-shield shirt, and red boots, matching the look of the popular young version of her currently on the Superman animated series in the real world. And the new Supergirl makes her debut. She retains one-eighth of her strength, speed, and can jump roughly an eighth of a mile, and this is considered to be about the power level of the original Superman at the time of his first publication. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, and nothing less than a bursting shell could pierce his skin. This change made the book interesting on the level of superpowers and action once again, a sharp turn towards more realistic fights than supernatural or metaphysical battles. Eventually, a mad scientist employed by Two-Face cloned Linda's Supergirl, and she met and fought with her own Bizarro clone. Their fight was inconclusive, and she did not dissolve or die as most Bizarro clones do, and she would become more important later on. As this new Bizarro Supergirl was the one to eventually find Matrix Supergirl, entombed in a sarcophagus of flame in a realm not quite physical, created by an ancient witch. 
Matrix Supergirl was awakened and used by the witch to fight Linda's Supergirl while Buzz and Mary Marvel watched from the sidelines. Linda expressed her feelings of inadequacy as they struggled. The witch used the corrupted spirit of Matrix to re-summon the carnivore demon, but Matrix became her true self and regained control, joining the fight alongside Linda. Carnivore grabbed Matrix and she dropped her flaming sword, but Linda picked it up and cut off the arm holding her. Buzz used the witch's own ritual knife to kill her. Being a demon still, he is the only one there permitted to kill another demon. And together with the Supergirls, they banish the carnivore back to demonic realms once more. Or, perhaps, to oblivion. Buzz then fades away to face judgment by his own kind. Wally appears long enough to heal and revive Linda, before also vanishing. Linda awakens to find Matrix as transformed into a radiant new form with flaming wings. She tells Linda she has been reborn as well, and given back what measure pow and given back what measure of power Matrix is able to give her, and she has been restored to her pure angelic self with the carnivore demon truly banished, and her soul finally redeemed. However, reality has not come back together without a hitch and a rocket containing the original Kara zor -El now streaks through the galaxies of this universe in the present day. In issue 75, the original Supergirl, Kara zor -El, makes her modern debut. She doesn't know she's in the wrong era, and has no way to get back in any case, so the world simply has two Supergirls until the end of the series. Fans love this version, and this was a fun time for Supergirl fans of older times and new alike, one final celebration of the character and all her incarnations before the book ended with issue 80, mostly to clear the way for the current version of Supergirl. This universe's modern Kara zor -El, who would arrive in the pages of Superman Batman after this run concluded. This was an editorial decision. As far as I know, this book had never been lacking in sales, the reason most comics get cancelled. The Spectre, who is at this time Hal Jordan, the Spirit of Redemption, comes to Linda and tells her that the timeline is now broken because Kara is meant to die during the crisis and she doesn't belong here. The only solution is to return her to her proper time, but she begs not to go if she's just going to die. To try and spare her, Linda makes the ultimate sacrifice, getting in Kara's rocket and going back in time in her place, leaving Kara to continue to be the Supergirl of the modern day. Linda Supergirl emerges from Kara's rocket and is met by Superman in the past. She fumbles her way through her introduction and assumes her place in history, but changing it to suit herself right from the start by going public with her existence. And Superman announces her to the world with a large display in a parade. Three years pass as Linda fills in for Kara, having adventures with her flying horse Comet and her super-powered cat Streaky, and overall enjoying the simpler, more innocent time, especially her life with Clark. So much so that they even fall in love. Superman reveals that he always knew she wasn't being upfront about being his cousin. He could tell she wasn't Kryptonian and knew right away she was wearing a wig. But he played along to find out her game, thinking her a possible enemy in disguise. But over time, he saw the goodness in her and dropped his suspicions, enjoying his life with her as well. She tells him the truth and that he's meant to end up with Lois. But Clark tells her that he doesn't love Lois. He loves Linda and they kiss. They even get married, and her wedding gown has the S-shield on it. It's a joyous affair for all the gathered superheroes, the bride and groom, really everyone but Lois, who prays that it's a dream, a hoax, or an imaginary story. Eight more years pass in relative bliss and harmony, and together Superman and Supergirl have a daughter. All seems to be going well, when one day, the Spectre returns. Linda sends her daughter away so they can talk alone. The Spectre tells her that she did not change the main timeline as they had hoped might be possible. Instead, she has created an alternate universe, and its existence now threatens all of reality as the crisis approaches. For the true timeline to once again be unified, Kara must be rescued from a villain who intends to use her in the situation to bring about the end of reality, and it falls to Linda to save her. She strikes a deal with the Spectre that her daughter will survive no matter what, and he agrees to save her and weave her into the new timeline, somehow. Linda hugs her one last time and says goodbye. Linda breaks into the villain's lair and frees Kara, defeating him in the end. She and Kara are then returned to the moment in time when Linda first replaced her and given the chance to set things right. Linda asks Kara if she trusts her, and she does with her very life. Linda then knocks out Kara and places her back in her rocket, 
which then blasts off again, back into space with its many mysteries. Linda confronts the villain responsible for bringing Kara here and giving her the chance to live her life. She asks him why he did it at all, and he says that it was worth a try, and then he vanishes. And with that, he was gone, and Linda was alone, more alone than she'd ever been in her life. She stood there for a time, waiting for the specter to return. He didn't. She waited for her child to be brought to her. She wasn't. Emotionally numb, she went home and learned her mother was in the hospital, having given birth. Her heart dead within her, she went to visit, more from obligation than interest. Linda! Linda, come in! Meet your baby brother! He's got a ton of hair. I'm so jealous! We finally decided on a name, and she saw the baby, and suddenly an entire portion of her life made moderately more sense. Hiya, Wally. How, how did you know? We just decided. And where's Kara? Linda had known a young boy named Wally, who claimed to be God. He disappeared. Through this rebirth, it was almost as if someone were trying to convince her that all was right with the universe. And, as if to reinforce it, that night she had dreams. Dreams that seemed more than mere dreams, but instead divine revelations. She saw her daughter cruising the byways of space in some nameless time or reality, eternally filled with the joy of youth. Her daughter has been sent 700 centuries in the future, and greatly resembles the extremely powerful robotic supergirl seen in a special issue during DC One Million so it can be assumed she has replaced the robot in the timeline and went on to have endless adventures of her own. And Linda of Leesburg saw Kara as well, in her proper place, with vague, dreamlike recollections of their time together, shaping her seemingly random choices. I want to call myself Linda Lee. And when she awoke, she knew they were the truth, designed to bring her solace. They did, in some measure but in greater measure, they didn't. She'd experienced too much, lost too much. She'd lied to people whom she'd come to love more than anything, and they were gone, and she was still there. Clark is reading Linda's final letter to Lois. It filled her with hate, but nowhere to put it. She couldn't hate the identity of Supergirl, because it meant too much to her. So instead... She hated Linda Danvers for failing to live up to the high standards that the S had set. Oh, Clark. And so she left to look for a place where lack of conscience and a cold ember instead of a soul could be pluses rather than minuses. Please, I beg you, do not look for her, because she has no wish to be found. But don't mourn her fate, please, because for a time she touched something truly great. She wants you to have the contents of this box. Please remember her fondly as someone who had a good run, longer than some others. No regrets. Love, a friend. Lois looks in the box to find Linda's skateboard. So, as you can see, the comic is quite a ride, and it's always changing and always well written with real depth of the characters, horror and action, as well as humor and romance, and it's a very satisfying experience overall, for those of you who choose to read it on your own. I hope you've enjoyed this remembrance of Matrix Supergirl, and Linda Danvers as well, and I think it's a proud part of the longtime character's legacy, honored in the modern day by the television version carrying on the name of Linda Danvers, and the selfless and heroic qualities of Matrix Supergirl. Well, that'll do it for this one, so take care out there. And as always, thanks for watching.